Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. As always, it's Jay. It's Wednesday, so it's a legend in their own lunchtime. So, it's a new series. I might have mentioned it last week that when we were list building, I kind of enjoyed looking at the HQs and seeing how you could build around them. So, last week was the start of it. If you haven't seen it yet, I urge you to go back. We started with the Loon King, and he is an absolute legend. I fell in love with that guy as soon as I saw his model. Rules were fantastic as well. So, he was the first one. I guess, like I was saying, I was riding the wave of the Grot at the time. So, I thought I'd go back a little step on seeing what the last wave that I was riding, which was Wrath and Rapture. And in that set, we had a new HQ, the Infernal in Raptress. So I thought, why not go and have a look at her War Scroll and see how she's changed the Slanesh army. For good or for bad, but we're just going to have a look. Okay? So, as I always say, if you're not uh, subscribed, please subscribe. Like, comment. It means so much to me and thank you for watching the video so far um even leave, leave a comment if you've got any you know dislikes on the channel to tell me what you don't like and what you wish i was doing different because it's all constructive and i would just want to say thank you for taking the time out for doing that and on with the show In case any of you forgot, the Infernal Raptress is a Demonet HQ of Slanesh. It's uh, quite straightforward. So she's going to have a big massive claw. She's going to be fast. But as you can see from the model, it's a very stunning looking model. I'm absolutely enthralled by this uh, model. Even down to the poor little guy who has now decided to be one with the music, what shall we say. It's, the model is so... It's got a visual impact on it, I, I believe. Where you can see, like, it's like tendons and sinew just being pulled out of him to be the harp. So, it's a striking model, i got to be honest. And, well, I think when you say Infernal and Rapturous... And you know it's going to come from uh, the Slanesh camp. This is just exactly what you picture. So, for me, it's a 10 out of 10. But, as striking, striking as our model is, let's have a look at the war scroll. And here we got the war scroll. Guys, if you are interested in having a look at this yourself, I am using the AOS app. But I am sure if you look at um, the Warmer community site and Warmer website itself, you should be able to get a copy of the War Scrolls. If you look under the Wrath and Rapture box set. Like I said, it's on the AOS app. So let's break it down. Movement of 6, even looking around that harp. 5 plus save, 10 bravery, 5 wounds. So, she's quick, she's staying about because of her bravery, and she's hanging in there in a fight with those uh, five wounds. But just being there, wielding a musical instrument isn't enough. She's actually got, you know, she's got some weapons, which we got two missiles and one melee. So... The harp is actually called the Heartstring Lyre. It's, it sounds it it sounds chaotic, fair play. But there we go. We got Cacophonous Melody, Range of 18, 
6 attacks, 3 plus to hit, 4 plus to wound, minus 1 to rend, 1 damage. That's a good amount of attacks, considering it's only one model. So, you're hitting on averages, you're wounding, just, you've got to be just over average on your dice rolls. So, you know, I say out of so out of six attacks, you're probably hitting three times, wounding two, roughly, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. I'm not saying it's guaranteed. So that's a nice barrage as somebody's coming in. But the other one, it's a little bit uh, tastier, to be honest. We've got the... Euphonic Blast. Range of 24, it's one attack, two plus the hit, so you get a better average on hitting it. Three plus the wound, so you've got a better average on wounding your opponent. Minus three to rend, which that that's a devastating start of minus three. And D3 damage. So you're only gonna hit once, but you can do between one to three wounds. On that model. Out of the two, I'd be using the blast as much as possible because I think you're going to take off more wounds with that one. I know it sounds weird, but I'm just going by my dice rolling. I could be wrong, and knowing me, I am wrong. I'm looking at this on a one track mind. So you've got to tell me down below what you think of it. But if somebody can get close enough to it after receiving all that missile attacks, we've got Ravaging Claws. And they are 1 inch range, 3 attacks, 3 plus the hit, 4 plus the wound, minus 1 to end, 1 damage. So it's... Yeah, it's, she's not going to be the best fighter, but... I think it's at the distance is where she's going to excel. But, like I've said before, we're not building around her weapons. We're not building around her wounds. It's the abilities. So, that's going to be in the next page. And I will get that up on the screen now. Two seconds. And here we are. We're on the abilities page. Guys, I hope you can see this because I'm trying out something a bit different. If you can't, let me know. I should have said this at the beginning, shouldn't I? But, hey oh, can't change it now. Like, we're looking at the abilities. The abilities for this lovely, lovely lady is Deadly Grace. If an unmodified roll for an attack made by the Ravaging Claw is 6. Not a modified 6, just a 6. That attack inflicts two hits on the target instead of one. Make a wound and save roll for each hit. So, on a lucky roll six, you double in your attack. Can't fault that. Always a bonus. And we've got the Discordant Disruption. I hope I said that right. Reroll successful casting rolls for enemy wizards that are within 24 inches or one or more models with this ability. So you can get a few of these girls, spam them across the board. And that shuts down a lot of wizards. That could affect a, a lot of undead armies. That could affect... Um, that could accept, affect Stormcast, Seraphon... Yeah, elves. That's a good swathe of armies that are going to take a hit from this girl. That's that's amazing. In addition, if the re-roll cast in roll is a double, that wiz wizard suffers D3 mortal wounds after the effects of the spell, if any, have been carried out. So if you fail on a double one, you've not only not got the attack, you're losing wounds as well. Wow, she's a, she's a scary old bird, this one. Oof. Chills down my back. 
harmonic alignment at the start of your hero phase, each friendly infernal in Raptors that is part of the Slanesh army and on the battlefield generates one depravity point for the army. Not really looked at the rules, I will be honest, for the depravity uh, points. Kind of guessing it's like the blood tithe points where if you get so many you can, you can summon demons. But one each friendly in Rapturus. So if you've got before these on the board, that's four points per hero phase. Wow. Wow. She's scary on her own. And when she's got her bandmates around her. This one time in band camp, I was turned into a hard string liar. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Take it from me, boys. Stay away from the band camp girls. It's scary what they can do. Right. The versatile instrument. Before attacking with a heartstring layer, choose either one of the uh, missile weapons characteristics for that shooting attack. That's kind of obvious. You're not going to shoot with the two of them. You've got to like string her up for the uh, the right one. And the keywords are chaos, demon, demonette, slanish, hero, herald of slanish, and infernal raptors. So you know there's going to be battle battle lines and battle plans that you could have on your Grand Alliance Chaos and just your yeah, Slanesh that's going to boost her and the other demonettes beyond belief. So, what did I say? She's a scaly bird. I don't want to mess with her. And if I see more than two on the board, I know I'm going to, well, basically my wizards are bending over and taking it. So that's a scary prospect. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below. Is it something you're bothered by? Is it something you're not bothered by? Have this given you something to think on when you see it across the board? It's not just, oh, that's a cool looking model. Tell me below. Oh. No, 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 no. Right then, guys, it's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know down below. I say it all the way through my videos. Comment down below, because I like hearing from you guys. The comment section is there. I don't disable it, because I want to interact with you guys. So if you got ways that you can improve the channel, tell me where I'm going wrong. Tell me what you like and dislike. Tell me if, well, it's not an if. Tell me what I'm wrong on down below. Surprisingly, you could tell me if I was right on a subject. That would be quite a shock to the system. But that's why the comment section's there, because I say it every week. It is a community channel run for the community by the community. So... Thank you again for watching the video. There's going to be more in this series. If you've got an idea of who to do next or what to do next, I'm not going to say it's a guy, a girl, cucumber or whatever. They can be whatever they want. Tell me down below in the comments. Just tell me who's the next legend that you want to put the spotlight on. So we can have a look at them. Yes, it is in a vacuum. It's not on a board. But we can see why we like that model. We can see why we would want to build an army around them. So, again, thank you. Thank you for watching the video. And be prepared. It's the bit of the show that I don't like doing, but I've got to do it. It's the shilling. So here it goes. <coughs> right, guys, at the end of the video... Down below is going to be links for PayPal and Patreon. It's got, Patreon's got tiers at the moment, but it's up to you. I'm, I'm not twisting your hands. If you enjoy the, uh, if you enjoy the videos, you could just subscribe, share them, let people know, and that's going to be more than enough for me. 
with help from you guys, we can expand the channel, but it's not a requirement of the channel. It's not a subscribed channel. It's not behind a paywall. This content is out in the public for the public to enjoy. But it's there. Be aware. And I shall see you in the next video. Adios, people. And what's the catchphrase this week? Because what was last week? Sex can wait, thin your paints. Nobody really commented on. Um... Oh, what can I think of? Yes. 99 problems, but my glue ain't one. Thank you very much.